What is gravity? Whenever you think about gravity, you think of something that has weight that gets pulled towards the earth. And this is gravity. Testing it is very easy. Just go stand on the scale. Whatever weight you have on planet earth, it would show it on the scale. But this isn't all about gravity. Like for example, the sun has so much gravity that eight planets orbit it. But our sun, which is a star, is nothing compared to the most powerful things in space. The strongest gravity in the world are black holes, and they don't even let light escape from them. So the force of gravity, or whatever you call it, how is it made? Where does it even come from? How does our rocky planet have a powerful force like this? If you want to understand gravity, you have to learn a little bit of physics. Everybody knows Isaac Newton. He was sitting in the backyard and an apple hit him in the head. But this is just a story. Isaac Newton really watched an apple fall from a tree. As he watched the apple, it really blew his mind how this works. Why does it come down straight? Why doesn't it go left or right? Or even crazier, why doesn't it go upwards? He wrote about it that the power of the ground is so much greater than the apple that it has nothing else to do. It has to choose the shortest distance to get to the ground. And that is why it falls straight down. From that day forward, all Newton wanted to do was figure out how this works. Until the end of his life, Newton couldn't figure out what this force is or where it comes from. All he said was that anything that has weight has gravity. The more the weight, the higher the gravity. Even an atom has gravity. A watermelon has gravity, but it's so small that we don't notice it. 400 years passes and nobody dares to challenge Newton's idea of gravity. Until the year 1905, a new physicist by the name of Albert Einstein challenges Newton's idea of what gravity is. Since this idea would completely demolish Newton's idea, everybody was kind of making fun of Einstein. And since he was Jewish, they would even mention that in the papers, that a Jewish man is challenging the god of physics, Isaac Newton's idea. The theory of relativity says, if you are in space and not in an atmosphere, everything will fall in the same rate, no matter the weight. David Scott is one of 12 people that went to the moon. And on the moon, it's basically space because there's no atmosphere. And David Scott had a hammer in his right hand and a feather in his left hand. And he let them go at the same time. These two at the same rate reached the ground at the same exact time. This test basically accepted the theory of relativity. Einstein also said something else that's very important. Two objects in space don't pull on each other, but the effects they put on the fabric of space drags them towards each other. Einstein says the gravity of the sun is not really pulling on the planets, but it's the effect it puts on the fabric of space that traps all the planets in rotating around it. Testing it is not that hard either. If you put a heavy ball in the middle of a piece of fabric and around it you throw smaller balls, the star bends space and time and the planets around it will orbit and be trapped in there. Another important thing Einstein mentioned is that when a heavy object is in space, it doesn't only affect the space of that area, it also affects time. And that means since it bends time, time is experienced differently in that area. There's another saying that says the world is four dimensions, but we only have access to three of them. The fourth dimension is time. But unfortunately, we have no control over it. It moves in one direction in the same rate. And we can't do anything about it. So this fabric of space basically drags the planets towards it. But why does the planet have gravity itself? Because the Earth is a giant object in space. And not only does it have an effect on the space time, but it also has the moon trapped around it. And the moon is forced to rotate around the Earth 
just like the Earth is forced to rotate around the Sun. The ideas of Einstein have not been proven yet, but another theory has not come up yet. It's good to know that NASA scientists use the theory of relativity to give the Voyager 1 speed. If you don't know what Voyager is, is one of the fastest objects humans have ever sent. This object has all of our information and it's moving towards space at a speed you can't imagine. But it didn't get this speed because of us. It got it because of the gravity of Jupiter. It has a speed of 17 kilometers per second and that's thanks to the gravity of Jupiter since it got slingshot off of it when it was moving through the solar system. And that is why they call it the slingshot effect because you're using another body's gravity for speed. So the speed it has is not thanks to like a V8 engine or something. It's because of gravity and it doesn't slow down because it's in a vacuum of space and nothing is in front of it. But there's a question here. Why does the International Space Station that's located 400 kilometers up not come crashing down to the planet? And when an astronaut goes for a spacewalk, why is it up there stationary and it doesn't come down? Why doesn't the gravity of Earth just pull them down? Not only does Earth's gravity pull the ISS towards itself, but it moves all the satellite towards itself as well. But this pulling is different than other, since it's outside of the atmosphere, it makes it move around the planet. And this basically creates the orbit. The International Space Station is always being pulled by the Earth, but towards the orbit of it. And that is why it moves at a speed of 28,000 kilometers an hour. And that's all thanks to the gravity. It's the same thing for satellites. You might ask, why do some satellites stay stationary in one area? That's because they make them go so high that they match the rotation of Earth and that is why they stay in one area. Like for example, this is hovering around the Middle East. This is one of the reasons they would make fun of Einstein for his idea because he would say the gravity isn't really from Earth but it's the effect it puts on the fabric of space. Newton would say it's the planet that has the gravity, but he said this 400 years before Einstein. So we got to give credit where credit is due because he was a genius for his time. Black holes are so dense that they have the highest effect on the fabric of space. And if any planet or star gets in its way, it will be devoured eventually. The way it seems right now, the most stable theory about gravity is the theory of relativity. And no scientist or physicist has been able to approve this theory or deny it. Some scientists say if we want to truly understand what gravity is and how it's formed, we have to study a black hole but we will have to be able to actually see it. At that point, we can get a better understanding on how gravity is affected by something so insane. You might ask, why doesn't the James Webb take a picture of a black hole? It still hasn't been able to find a proper black hole to take a photo of because it's harder than it seems. Scientists say eventually, Either a new theory will come up about gravity or we will understand that Einstein's theory was right all along. 